with Solid Edge ST3 in draft, we've made uh, many improvements. And one of those improvements that our customers have asked for is perspective views. Now whenever you bring in and create a custom view, you'll have the option of turning on perspective and you can choose which perspective view you would like and even have a custom one selected as well. And then once you've placed this, you can select to uh, the many different options that we have inside of your view, but you can also balloon, uh, call out to these uh, parts in this particular view. This view could be uh, done for one pictorial uh, portions, but also for documentation, for legal documentation like a patent uh, requires a perspective view. One of the other options that we've added is the ability to bring in zones. Zones we've had inside of assembly now for a while. And with that, you, whenever you select your assembly, uh, you can select from a particular view. Now if you watch the assembly demonstration, you saw how we had placed some dimensions on a particular view and those were also that view was created uh, by using a zone so if you remember that we placed those um, PMI dimensions on there one of the other options that I'm showing you here is the ability to display your parts based on their part color so the edges and the lines and arcs and everything are going to be displayed based on the part color that's in either in the part file or applied inside of the assembly. So we're not, we're, now we're just going to retrieve those dimensions that we saw from the assembly file. And if there were balloons or anything like that that were annotations that were in this particular view, those would also show up as well. Parts list. Parts list have been enhanced for ST3. The many things that we have is we've broken out the mass. You can now add two types of mass. One for the item and one to give the mass of the quantity. So if you have two of the same part that's in there, we're going to give you the total amount of mass for those particular uh, items. One of the other things that we have is uh, you saw in the assembly presentation where you can generate assembly numbers. Those will be brought over into the draft file itself so you can bring those over if you ch so choose. And the other one that we've added, a couple more, is exploded items and you can also use level based uh, item uh, numbers. We've always had the expand weldment but you can also now with ST3 show the top level assembly just in the list. It creates it as a row uh, for this particular one. Now since we're going to break this out into an indented type um, list I want to change a few things in the balloon and while we're talking about indentions you can go into let's say the item number and I want it to actually indent so I want it to look like what it would inside of the assembly if I were to break that out so let's just go ahead and place And one you'll be able to see instantly here, our balloons are now numbered just as if they were indented in our bill of materials as you see here. So you can see now we have five, which is a subassembly. And inside of that, we have another subassembly. And so we have another indention based out on that. So you can see that improvements have been greatly uh, made to the bill of material. Let's take a look at our mass and you can see that we have uh, if we have ended up with a quantity of two we're going to double that mass three four etc. So you can see now we're we've improved uh, parts list so you can get uh, the parts list that you want 
indented or not indented, top level, atomic, exploded, uh, for your parts list. Now before we get to whole table, I'm going to show you some improvements that we've made to um, inspecting some items onto your drawing. One is the auto, uh, what we call smart inspection. Just like in we have in smart dimension, we now have a smart measure. This is inside of Solid Edge, but it's also being uh, placed into the free 2D version of Solid Edge. So if you have someone out on the shop floor, they can install free 2D, and now they can measure things using this smart tool. We've also enhanced the distance between, which we'll see here in a second. But the smart tool works just like Smart Dimension. Uh, you can pull something off and you click. It will not place it. It will just clear the set. And you can just go back to uh, picking items. You can see how they are the same. You will have radius. You can change it to a diameter. Uh, if you wanted to do distance between with the Smart, you can. Like here, picking between the two arcs will be placed there as well. We also uh, will do a smart dimension or a smart measure between views. But before I show you that, let me let me go ahead and detail or dimension out between those views as well. And let's show you the distance between command because this one uh, has been enhanced in that right now it's set up to do one to one so whatever the measurement is on the actual sheet itself and you can see there that is on the sheet but what I want is the scale of the actual view itself and so you select this option to say use the scale why don't you select this uh, the um, view itself you'll be able to see the scale come up there in the gray but notice on the distance box here it's the same as the dimension over there and as I continue to select notice what's happening is that we're giving you what that distance was or excuse me is and what is the total that I've been clicking to give you that total and we're also giving you that scale <clears throat> now I showed you the distance between two views that you can do the exact same thing with this command it doesn't matter you'll be able to get that dimension between those two views and you'll be able to see that the scale is one to one and that and we're giving you the correct dimension so everyone can be assured that everything is going to be exactly the way it needs to be now one other option is in the callout command now in the callout command we've added new coding uh, for you know the coding for your special characters you have this percent and two letter type code well we've added new coding to place in here tolerances so let's take a look at what those are I've set a few of them up for this presentation and let's say I want to do a whole information I want to grab that whole information but I want to do a plus and minus well, let's do the same thing, but I just want to do a plus tolerance. And so you'll be able to see that I can just give the plus tolerance. But maybe I want to give a limit tolerance. So I have my limit between there. Or let's just go ahead and give them uh, just a, another tolerance in the negative. So you can set your callout for your whole callouts for any callout that if there's a tolerance on there, you'll be able to place that tolerance right inside of that callout. Now one of the improvements that we've made to the whole table itself is the ability to add now color um, to your list. So if I wanted to come over here I can say now grid line color. I can choose that to be any color that I want and I can also choose my text so it's not being driven by style it's being driven exactly inside of that whole table uh, property and you can just again select all that information and you can see now that your whole table can be listed and you can add whatever color that you want to those particular ones. Now one of the other enhancements that we've made is to the print command 
before we just had regular print now we have print drawings where I want to print multiple drawings but I want to also print you can see here all my sheets are D size sheet I can set my printer up in this case since I can't demonstrate to you on screen how to print to a plotter I'm just going to plot to a PDF which is going to be the same but notice that I'm plotting to an ANSI D and I want to have multiple sheets to there now let's say I went and I added a smaller size sheet maybe an A or a B size sheet and multiple multiples of those will be printed on one sheet and you can see the options that you have here sheet boundary I can print out the cut line if I need to from there what are my margins for this those can be placed on there but I'm gonna add another sheet to here and let's just grab and we can see that this one has multiple sheets and they're A3 wide. So let's go ahead and preview that. And you can see that we have listings inside of here. It looks exactly like there. And you can see that our A size sheets are being uh, printed on one sheet. So let's go ahead and finish off that PDF. We can give it a name. Now we can take a look at the end result with our PDF viewer. It looks exactly the way, the way it was inside of our draft sheet. And you can see that the two other sheets have been printed on the one sheet as well. So we hope you find these improvements uh, productive. And there are many more out there. We're just showing you a small subset. So we thank you.